Hey everyone, thanks for joining in today. Today's adventure is going to be baseboarding and redoing the inside of this closet. Now, truth be told, yes, I'm missing the closet doors. But we're not going to talk about that right now because that's actually on the to-do list. You know, the ever-growing, never-ending to-do list. So get your tape measures ready and let's get started. So we're going to start with taking measurements from the inside corner across all the way across and do all the sides. Now just because nobody's going to see this section right here, this is the back side of the closet door, we're not going to bother trimming that. That's just a waste of material and a waste of time. So now for the fun part, I'd like to introduce everybody to Boshi. So this is Boshi, my beautiful, uber powerful, never let me down yet miter saw. This is the type of beauty that is perfect for trim work and really and truly most cutting. So with her blade up, we're going to start by putting the whole entire cutting disc to a 45 degree angle. And you go by the red marker all the way over to 45. It automatically clicks in to that setting. If I wanted to have it a little bit off, I could, and then I just tighten the knob and it'll lock it in place. It's ready to go. Always remember, safety first. Protect the ears, protect the eyes. If you can, protect the fingers. Never throw out your scrap pieces, especially if you have more baseboarding or trimming to do. You never know where these puppies might fit. Always save them, saves on the bank account. Now that you got all your pieces cut, we're going to talk about the different ways that you could attach them. So, you could use an adhesive. Sounds great, sounds quick. Problem is, if you ever, 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 ever have the possibility that you're gonna have to change the flooring or change the trim and baseboards. Listen, this stuff is gonna ruin your walls. It'll give you way more work to get it off than what it's worth. Now the next step, you could also go with your good old nails and hammer. Don't make fun of my baby hammer, it's very useful. You never know when you need to get into those tight spots. But anyway, this, it's good, easy to remove the baseboards if you ever need to get them off. However, this just takes a little too long for my liking. Need I say more? Speed. Power. Ease of use. 
Let the tool do the work, not you. Okay, so the next stage is to fill the gaps on the baseboards. So, I use this product. It's a DAP product. It's white and it also paints over real easy. It absorbs the paint color, so no matter what color you use, it'll absorb. Now, the ultimate secret to getting good straight lines, a spoon. I know, random, but it works. And we'll see how. Okay, so now that that's all done, let's see. Paint a bowl in 30 minutes. Well, I tend to like to give things about 45 minutes. What are we gonna do for 45 minutes? So now that the baseboards are done, it's time to start painting. I personally prefer an angled paintbrush. I find it helps for pretty much all the different spots, nooks and crannies to get into, and giving a good distribution of the paint. So you want to make sure your paint is smooth and creamy, that it's not clumpy, that you make sure to stir it enough to get all that sediment off of the bottom and have equal distribution throughout all of the paint. And that's it. We're all finished. Thank you for joining me in making my adventure our adventure. And always remember, diversify your home improvement skills so that you are completely independent.